I'm really excited because of course we're going to get a bit of a tour and find out a little bit more about quick rind now. So quick rind, you're kind of separated into two areas, aren't you? Yes, we've got two shops. Uh, one is predominantly regrinding or remanufacturing as we like to call it and shop two, which is next door, which is uh, the new tool production. But it's quite interesting because before this video we were talking, you, someone said something quite interesting to you about not making as much money on remanufacturing, but you're trying to push that area. Why is that? Well, what it was, it was a, a Dutch finance director, one of our big customers, who, uh, as I was doing the tour, asked, well, which one do you make more money on? Do you make more money on new or do you make more money on the remanufactured? Yeah. I said, well, we make more money on the new. And he said, well, why do you keep pushing the remanufacturers then? I said, because you'll make more money from that. You'll be more economical uh, and save more money by using more remanufacturers. And that's what we want to do is have a long-term business. Exactly. And, and you talk a lot about educating people, don't you? Yes. Well, a, a lot of uh, remanufactured tools that come back in are normally smashed up. And it's not necessarily smashed up from the machines that they've been put into, but the way they've been handled. So if a, if a carbide tool is smashed against another carbide tool, it can easily chip. Yeah. So we spend a lot of time, and it may only be simple, but just educating the customers into handling them a bit better. But then that helps long term, I guess. Yeah, yeah, massively, yeah. Right, OK, so let's talk about the beginning of the process. What happens? Well, this is a, a Carlex machine which stores uh, tens and, well, probably hundreds of thousands of blanks in. Uh, many, many tons. So what we use this, uh, uh, we draw it down, so I'll just do it quickly now. And how much carbide is in there? Uh, over 20 tonne. Wow, yeah. that's a lot and of that's, tools. That, that's just a part of our storage as well, so there's much more elsewhere. So then you'll draw the carbide tool down, yes. and then what happens? What, what's, so, the, you know, what's the sizes of the tools that you can well, produce? We, we make anything from 0.1 diameter, uh, on, normally on a 6 millimeter shank, up to 40 mil diameter carbide, and anything up to 440 mil length. So wow. yeah, quite a, quite a wide variety. Yeah, okay, and so it starts here, where does it go next? Yep, so what you've got here, you've got some rod, and you've got some blanks. Blanks are specific sizes, all cut differently for different tools, and then rod, which we may uh, pull the rod out and cut into different sizes again. So once we've done that, we pull it down. This is a typical, typical blank size. Uh, and then once we've done that, we take it over to the etching machine with all the paperwork included uh, to etch it up with its specific codes. And of course, for traceability. And for traceability, yeah. Right, let's go. So what's this next stage of the process then? These are the blank prep machines, the rollomatics. So that, what are they going to do here? So they change the blank from a, just a cylindrical shape into uh, all different shapes and sizes before they go on to the flute grinders for cutting the geometry. And it's quite interesting because you're using automation really early on in the process. Yes, well, we, have, we automate all of our machines because we have to, because we're, we're very, very busy and we're producing tens of thousands of tools every week. And what's your batch sizes? Well, we, we will do one-offs. It's not ideal, but we will do one-offs. And we go up to, say, 5,000. Wow, OK. And so the next stage then is? Is the flute grinding, which is, which is basically producing the geometry, which is the important part. So here we are with the, the one on my right is the, the tool blank which has been prepped next door with the uh, rollermatics and the one on the left or my left is the one that's been flute ground all geometry finished on the Anker MX-7 here. And this machine, does it do all of that process? It, yes, it does do all of that. Uh, years ago you would have many, many processes and different operations to do it but with these machines now all the process is completed in one operation. Fascinating and you're automating so much of the process. Um, Ross, what makes you different here at Quick Grind? Well, we design tools for the applications rather than designing tools for a generic sort of uh, market. So we do try to work quite closely with our partners, or as we like to call them partners, and make sure that the tool is exactly right for them and remanufacturable for them. And, and that helps us drive the cost down. And have you had successes? I know you've had successes, so have you got an example? Well, yeah, I mean, we are 80% export still at the moment, trying to drive the sort of UK business up and up. But uh, most the reason why we are so successful abroad is that within two years of getting into a new customer or partner, we normally get the, the cost down by 50% within those first two years. That's what makes us so successful, just the, the full model of the design of the tools, the remanufacture, and then the vending on, on the end of it. So Lindsay, this is our 3D uh, Walter scanner. So this is our final inspection, but before we talk a bit about this, 
the tools have already been 100% inspected and laser scanned in process on the anchor machines. So, so what happens here then? So here you, you put the tool in, it basically scans the tool and either can do a like a shadow graph full uh, profile scan or they can actually do a 3D full geometry scan too. So who needs this? Is it more for yourself or is it more for the customer demand? Well for both actually because we like to know exactly what our, our tools are doing uh, and also like to know the measurements throughout so we have the traceability if we ever need to but more and more now all customers are requiring this, this sort of data. Okay and is this the final process? Well this is final process in, in a lot of cases but also in a, a lot of other cases they have to go off to be coated in various different coatings. So once coated, uh, this is our dispatch area. Um, basically they go out in all these boxes that you can see around and that you can see that there's multiple cameras around the room. So the inspection uh, and counting in of everything when they come in and out of boxes is, is absolute pinpoint because obviously packaging of these tools is, is paramount as well. However, what you're actually seeing here is batches of regrinds or remanufacturers that's come in from overseas. So now we're in a, in, a, in a process of making sure that they're counted again, like I just mentioned, under camera, so that there's no dispute at all under tool numbers, because that can happen quite often. Uh, yeah, and once they're ready here, then they'll be shipped out to the shop floor for remanufacture. You must have a lot of people working here and a lot of shifts happening. Yes, yes, we do. We're, we're running on a 24-6 basis. Uh, like I said, with all the automation that we, we, we've invested in, it's uh, pretty much the guys have gone by six o'clock um, they normally come back in about three four o'clock uh, but sort of on only on a skeleton on those sort of later hours uh, mm -hmm. and everything else is unmanned it just shows how busy you are thank you for letting us have a tour around your facility is there anything you'd like to say to anyone you know maybe you know an educational reason or something as to why people should come to quick grind and use your tools and success stories you've got well, like I said, we, we make success stories all over the world. And I say it's still at the moment, it's 80% export, which we'd like to encourage more, more exports still, but obviously more of the, the UK business to try and come and see what we actually do and the, the developments we can do within their processes. It's not like we're just going to sell them a tool and then turn our backs on them. We want to actually, you know, uh, get involved in the process, make sure we can improve the tooling and improve the process in their own factory. And then again, we use the remanufacturing and the vending uh, um, to complete the sort of cycle. Oh, just to finish, what do you mean by the vending then? Well, the vending, we have uh, our own vending business, so we've done, we designed our own controller. So basically, uh, any, really any sort of uh, mechanics you want to, uh, to organise in regards to vending, so say you wanted to vend regrinds prior to uh, new tools, uh, we have full stock of accountability within the vending machines. We can fire emails off if you're down to sort of uh, a limited um, stock in the vending machines. Yeah, so we're, we have that all under our own control and we can install them at, at will. You can see it's come from demand from the customer that you've produced that as well. So anyway, thank you so much thank for you. the tour. Thank you very much.